Number 40. A laboratory investigation shows that a sample of uranium ore contains 5.37 milligrams of uranium-238, and then it also has 2.52 milligrams of lead, which is 206. Calculate the age of the ore, and the half-life of the uranium-238 um, is 4.5 times 10 to the 9th years. Okay. So here we go, right? We have some type of ore, right? Which contains multiple metals. In this case, it has a sample of uranium and it's got a sample of lead. Okay. So the first thing is go straight to what the question's actually, actually asking, right? We want to calculate the age of that ore. So if you're, you know, 19 years old, that means that 19 years has passed right? If you're 21 years old, 21 years has passed, right? So in this case, the age of this ore, whether it's 10 years old or 20 years old or 2000 years old, this is just basically saying how much time has elapsed. So in essence, we're looking for a general T value. Now, um, I just want to say that when we're doing radioactive decay, when you're doing your nuclear equations, just know that any type of radioactive decay, I don't care if we're talking about uranium, which we're talking about here, right? Or we're talking about carbon-14, or we're talking about any other type of radioactive material, all radioactive decay abides by first-order kinetics. And if you are doing nuclear chemistry... Um, chances are you probably already dealt with your kinetics chapter. Now, because we're in nuclear chem, chances are they always give you, you know, more, f more formulas to memorize. But if it abides by first order kinetics and we already did the kinetics chapter, you could always go back to your first order kinetics equations, which what is what I like to do. I don't like to memorize more formulas than I need to. I just pull the ones that I already know. These two formulas are your first order rate law equations your integrated rate laws, your half-life for your first order, and your integrated rate law with your amounts. And these are the two that we're going to use here. Now, in this case, we want to solve for that general time that has elapsed. For each equation, there are two T values, but this one is more specifically for a half-life. Now, I don't know if this is specifically um, going to be half decayed. So I have to use this formula where it has the general T value. So we're definitely going straight for this, right? And we know that we want to solve for ultimately this X value, this time. But that means that we should know these three other variables. So let's start off with the K value, right? The K stands for the rate constant. Now, as I'm looking back into the question, uh, they didn't give me a rate constant. So how am I going to find it? Oh, they gave me the half-life. So I can use my half-life formula to find out that rate constant. So let's just quickly do that. The half-life they told us was 4.5 times 10 to the 9th years. So that means in 4.5 times 10 to the 9, the uranium is going to break down to twice or two, you know, break down into half, uh, 50%. So let's go for it. 4.5 times 10 to the ninth equals, we got the 0 0.693. That's a constant value for this formula. That's just the ln of two. And we want to solve for x. So cross multiply and then divide. Just showing you guys. So we got 4.5 times 10 to the ninth x, which is the k value, equals 0 0.693. Let us divide each value by 4.5 times 10 to the ninth. Okay, let's take that and then 0 0.693 divided by 4.5 times 10 to the ninth. There we go. So we have a K value equals to 1.54 times 10 to the negative 10th. 
um, and that is years to the minus one. Your units for K is always going to be whatever the time units are, and then to the minus one are per year. So going back to this formula, we now know that we have a rate constant of 1.54 times 10 to the negative 10th years, or per year. Okay, so we, we have this value. We need the x value, which means that I should know these two values. Now, just for standard, right, these two are talking about the quantity of your substance. Now, the 0, A0, means that 0 time has gone by. So this is your initial amount. And the other amount, just the A value, is the final amount. Now, just know that for this, this is the final amount that's remaining. It's not how much has decayed. It's how much is remaining of your substance. So in this case, if we want to talk about the age of the ore, and they gave us the half-life of only uranium, I should only know the initial amount of uranium, and I should only know the final amount that's remaining of uranium. Now, all they told me was that when they got that sample, the uranium contained 5.37 milligrams. Keep in mind that, you know, some, some dude or some, you know, dudette, right, whoever was in the lab, picked up a ore that at that present moment only contained 5.37 milligrams of the uranium. All that time has elapsed, right? So at that present moment, this is how much that's left, right? And if it's that much that has been left, that's how much that is remaining, so we know that after all that time has gone by, we have a final amount of uranium for 5.37 milligrams of uranium that is left over. But now the problem is, how am I going to find out how much was initial all the way back to the beginning, right? It really depends on how old this ore is. But they kind of gave us some context. They did say that... We also had 2.52 milligrams of this lead. Oop, and then what happened over here? 88's all around. Okay. So, I'm looking at these two values, right? 5.37 milligrams and 2.52 milligrams of the lead. Now, this lead value is way lower, not really way lower, but it is significantly lower than what is still remaining in the uranium. Where did this 2.52 milligrams come from, right? Hmm. It seems like our initial amount that we had, so we'll say the initial amount of uranium that we had, over time, right, we don't know. That's what we're trying to find out, right? How much time has elapsed? But for some time, this has radioactively decayed and it broke off into the amount that we have for the uranium, which is 5.37 milligrams. Plus, now it has basically transferred over into, what is it, 2.52 milligrams of the lead. So, basically, what we have to do is simply not add these two values up, because... One is uranium and one is lead. But by using stoichiometry, we can find out from that lead how much it turned into, into the uranium. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our stoichiometry and say, okay, if I had 2.52 milligrams of the lead, I want to find out how much is of the uranium. But remember, when you do stoichiometry, you always got to convert to moles and that always comes from grams. So the first thing is that I'm just gonna take my 2.52 milligrams and just convert it into grams, right? Milligrams into grams, you just divide by 1,000. So 2.52, I'm just gonna put the value on the screen just for now, just so that when I do the math, I have it already. 0 0.00252 grams of the lead. So let's go for it, 0 point. 
zero zero two five two grams of the lead times by the ratio. We don't want grams of lead anymore. That goes bye bye. That goes on the bottom. Moles of lead up top here. Great uh, review for stoichiometry, right? Grams to moles or moles to grams. That's always one mole is whatever the mass they tell you. Now, in our case, it's only the 206. So we're not going to use the periodic table values. They told us the specific mass. So I have to use that. Now, in this case, mole of PB goes on the bottom and mole of big bad boy uranium goes up on top here. But now, what are the numbers here, right? How am I going to know what are the moles for the uranium and what are the moles for the lead, right? Generally, we usually have a balanced equation. But the idea here is that uranium will decompose into lead by a series of steps. Now, in this case, we're jumping down from a 92 all the way to an 82, right? That's a difference of a number of 10 on the bottom. And we're jumping from 206, right, from 238 to 206. So 238 minus 206, that's 32. Now, just know that these series of atomic masses and atomic numbers are made up from all of the radioactive material. There could be some alpha particles, some beta particles, right? Pos uh, beta emission, alpha emission that just keeps emitting into the atmosphere to release 32 as a mass and 10 as an atomic number. But the idea here is that since you're just releasing your particles and you're not like doubling your uranium or you're doubling your, your lead, it's only going to be a one to one, um, ratio. So with nuclear reactions, just know that for your actual, actual elements, it's going to be one to one. All the other stuff gets picked up by your particles. And now we go to moles of uranium on the bottom, grams of uranium up on top, one mole for every, they told us 238, so I have to use 238. And once we get those gram values, we could just multiply by 1,000 to get the milligrams. Units have to remain the same. So let's do it. So we got this number divided by 206 times 238, and we get 0 0.0029, and that's grams. So just times this by 1,000, and 1, 2, 3, this is like 2.9, and maybe we'll pull it out, maybe 2.91 milligrams of uranium. Okay. So now, if this 5.37 milligrams of uranium was final, this, the 2.91, is how much has decayed. But now the question is, keep in mind that we're doing all of this because we wanted to find that total amount, right? Initial, all the way back in the day, where there was none that decayed. Well, it's going to be the 5.37 that's remaining because that's still there, plus the 2.91. Oh, and this is milligrams. This isn't grams. So it's going to be the 5.37 milligrams plus the 2.91 milligrams as well. So 5.37 plus 2.91. We're looking at roughly 8.28 milligrams, and that is the number that's initial. So pause the video if you need to. We did a lot here, but all this has to go because um, we got to have room to do the actual conversions. So this is all going in three, two, one, bye bye. But now at least we have all of our values because now, and where did this go? Negative 10. Okay. Now um, we have every piece of the information that we need to solve for that time. So here we go. We got ln of something equals negative 
plus the ln of that, just leaving in the framework. So we had ln of 5.37 equals negative, the k value was 1.54 times 10 to the negative 10th, and that's times by the x value, plus the ln of 8.28. Okay, simplify it out. Let's just take those ln values, see what we get, and then we just use our, you know, handy dandy PEMDAS to guide us through the algebra. So ln, and maybe um, this one, this one they told me the value, so it's not an exact value at 5.37. So we got 1.6808 equals negative 1.54 times 10 to the negative 10th times the x value plus ln of 8.28. Okay, so we get 2.1138. Let's now subtract the 2.1138 on both sides. This goes bye-bye. This gets left as negative 1.54 times 10 to the negative 10th times x. And then we'll take the exact values here. So this minus the 2, we get negative 0 0.433. And then just solve for the time. So we divide on both sides by the negative 1.54 times 10 to the negative 10th. Negative 1.54 times 10 to the negative 10th. And I have that exact value somewhere here. So this divided by the negative, let's find that k value, the 1.54. Here we go. Wow, <laughs> that's a long time. This rock is really old. Um, I guess we'll do, I guess we'll do two sig figs. 2.8 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, so how old is this ore? This is 2.8 times 10 to the 9th years old. It's been through a lot in life. It's seen a lot of stuff. Whew. Uh, what is that? How many commas? We're at this comma. We're at this comma. 2.8. What is this? Bing. Bada bing, bada boom. So this is millions. 2.8 billion years old? That's outrageous. That's crazy. That's like at the beginning of the Big Bang. Wasn't the Big Bang 5.6 years? Billion years? Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure it's something like that. 5.6, 4.5, something like that. Billion years. So this has been around quite a while, but that's how old the ore is. Hopefully this helped. Thank you for tuning in. Um, thank you so much for coming to the channel and to using the channel to help you with your chem. Uh, we also got physics and math videos with with uh, much more as the years progress. So you can always check the channel out just to see what new stuff we got. We love helping you out. My brother and I, we really do appreciate you all. Uh, for the new school year, we opened up memberships if you guys want to become a member. There's tons of perks. There's four different tiers if you guys wanted to be one. Uh, so you could always check it out. And as always, I hope you have a great day. Keep studying hard, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.